Hello, Launch Director Marcel Jan Krijgsman here in Kerbal Space Program with KRPC and my Python skills. I have learned Python and I have my certificate from Interactive Python Programming or Interactive Programming on Python from Rice University on Coursera.org. Only part one, part two will follow a while later, I hope. I uh, haven't planned it yet, but uh, it's. I love the course, it's great. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And so, last time I ran Kerbal Space Program from a Python script, and this time I thought it's time to do something more. Now, I've been thinking about a suborbital flight, but actually I wanted an orbit. I, want a re I wanted a rocket and a Python program that would get me into orbit. And it's here. And let me just briefly, I think briefly, I will let me walk you through it because uh, I had a lot of fun with this. First of all, uh, when you uh, go to the script, uh, some familiar things are there, and some things like th this. This uh, talks about a canvas and a screen size. Why is that? Because I, I've added a panel. And on that panel, I can display values, uh, values from parameters or values from the system. Uh, so, like values uh, about uh, how high am I? Uh, is it and, and what phase of the launch am I in? So, I use that heavily because the wonderful thing about this panel is that I don't have to look at the Python command line every time how the flight is going. I can watch values. Uh, increasing decreasing while the flight is going on so you'll see that in a moment it's great uh, I have some v standard values uh, gravity turn will be at 12 kilometers apoapsis will be what 100 thousand uh, 100 uh, kilometers periapsis uh, put that on a low value 72 kilometers so we're just out of the atmosphere that's good enough for me it won't be a perfect orbit, by the way. It won't be a perfect launch. Uh, I can do manually. Manually, I can do much better, I think. But it's so cool that it's <laughs> doing this all by itself now. It's just wonderful. So there's some text in the panel. And yeah. And then um, I have some text on the, the prints. The prints here are just for the, for the command line. And you won't see that. So... Um, here we get the default act engaging the autopilot. By the way, I discovered that even though it doesn't have the SAS on, the autopilot is on. It's how the Python script is running. So that's great. And you can tell it to make the spacecraft, the rocket pitch a certain way. And ideally when it starts, it's still straight up. And then here is the here are the text lines. So the printouts are for the, the, the command line the text context this is the stuff that is going to be displayed on screen so that's great it tells when the engine starts and uh, first stage burn and that so it will start the rocket of course just like the last time except this time it's not in clamps and will actually go somewhere it will check uh, while it's launching how uh, the solid fuel amount of solid, solid fuel in the boosters is doing and if it's out then it will separate the boosters just like the last time the, f the the little stage that we had and then it will pitch a little bit fur bit bit to the to the west and that's uh, what you see here the uh, I had to find out how this exactly worked uh, because at first I was launching northwards uh, for that you need to well let me tell you how this works so 80 percent is Basically, the way uh, the way the if this the the amount of uh, the degrees that the spacecraft is is hanging is not a good word, but uh, this is just uh, this basically sends it says it's fears of ten percent uh, ten ten degrees of the straight up, and the ninety percent it tells you which way which direction it will go the heading, and the heading yeah I. Uh, <coughs> Pitch and heading didn't tell much to me, uh, for, certainly as non-native English speaker. 
but uh, the heading means uh, 90 percent means i'm going westward so it took a while before i found out what uh, i just tried and tried until i found the right values basically cost a, cost a lot of kerbal lives but hey it's it's worth it then uh it will uh, wait until the gravity turn is reached will burn until gravity turn is reached uh i've set that as a as a variable which is slightly more sophisticated but not much and it will show the apoapsis value and that is really cool i don't have to look at the map map screen anymore i can just see how my apoapsis is going and uh it will say it, uh, and, oh, and by the way then uh, the gravity turn will be done here and when the target apoapsis of 100 kilometers is reached the burn will stop the engine goes off it will sleep for a second and the first stage will separate now this could have been a lot more sophisticated but hey give it give me a chance to figure this all out uh, uh, of course i wanted to use the first stage up to the last drop of liquid fuel but next time maybe but uh yeah so uh, the first stage will separate be separated it will sleep for two seconds after activated the, uh, after the second stage is activated it will burn shortly and then it will uh, pitch to 20, 20 degrees so that's low over the horizon <coughs> in the direction of the horizon but uh, slightly above and then it, uh, the um, the second stage engine will burn for 10 seconds just to make uh, the uh, the flight, uh, yeah, well, the flight path a little bit uh, wider is the best word I can give think for, of it. I'm not into uh, aerospace, you can hear. Now, the spacecraft will wait until the uh, until 90% of the apoapsis is reached, and then it will burn. And by the way, I thought of this neat wave to show how much more meet much more meters before. Uh, the burn will start, but uh, actually a part of it will drops off the screen. I haven't find out that found it out yet how that works. Uh, but uh, there's more stuff to discover then, and then it will turn to prograde, and that's actually very funny because until now, until this point, I turn the spacecraft uh, basically in a certain. Uh, pitched the spacecraft and had the spacecraft in a certain way but now it has a certain it has a prograde direction i can use that it's not efficient but hey it works uh if you have enough fuel and uh, so it will actually you will see the spacecraft actually turn prograde and that's this, this part here ap direction is 0 comma one comma zero that's what it means you find this in the documentation of krpc what that is there's something about heading and pitching uh, there's a, a, uh, a chapter about that then and of course i've done this before with my little spacecraft on the space on the launch pad i extend the solar panels and then the orbit burn will done be done and that will take a while and after that's done it will check <laughs> and it will burn until the periapsis of 72 kilometers is reached and here you'll see the code doing that it will check until the target periapsis is reached and when it's reached it will stop burning then throttle will be zero and it will tell you welcome in orbit so let's see how that works uh, i will run the run the python uh, program i will allow it to run on ksp and you see the countdown happening here on the left side engine start first stage burn and there we go and i'm not doing anything oh and the uh, red lines here this is the uh, turns out that uh, the key i use to start the video is the same as uh, to show you as the one to show you the atmospheric drag so first stage burn is happening now these boosters are uh, are spent and they are separated you see the apoapsis is increasing but we won't get there before the gravity turn which will happen about now yes look at that it's just heading there all by itself and you see the apoapsis increasing again until we reach 100,000 meters 
And we have arrived. First stage is ditched. And now we'll see the second stage burn for 10 seconds. Okay. And it will say that it will burn after uh, 44,000 meters. Let's have a look at the map screen. How that is looking. Looking pretty good, actually. Yes. Look. Okay, it's a little bit higher than uh, 100,000 meters. It's actually 109,000 meters and 300 meters extra. But that's okay. That's the extra burn the second stage it said, so that's okay. So now we can wait comfortably in the know that the spacecraft is running uh, it's this in itself. And we can time warp a little bit. But you have to check that you stop the time warp in, in, in time because uh, you it might not uh, start the burn at the right time. The solar panels are um, extended and it's uh, the spacecraft is turned toward the prograde marker as you can see here. That's pretty cool. And as you can see we see the value for the periapsis, which is negative, where it's still uh, underneath the ground, bas basically. And uh, you can see how long it takes before to increase in the uh, at the first part of the burn, and then it will go uh, faster and faster until we reached 72 kilometers altitude. So basically, what we're doing here is we're running the spacecraft, this this Kerbal spacecraft like the Soviets did uh, with the Vostok program. The Vostok uh, spacecraft was basically completely automated, as, as far as I know. Yuri Gagarin, uh, nevertheless, the, the heroic mission he did, didn't have to do much. He didn't have to, have to push many buttons uh, uh, during his flight. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't make it any more heroic, by the way, because nobody done anything like that before, didn't know if he would survive and it was basically dangerously dangerous enough but the american uh, uh, astronauts they were test pilots and they said no way we're not we're not monkeys we want to do something to do we we can steer uh, experimental uh, aircraft uh, and jet fighters and all that kind of stuff and x-15 spacecraft that actually flew to the, the edge of space no way that we are going to just sit there we want uh, we want to steer the spacecraft, so that's how the American design is uh, com pretty much different. But uh, yeah, so uh, and this uh, the, so they uh, the Kerbals get the Soviet treatment basically, the Vostok treatment, and uh, they seem to enjoy it. They're a bit silent at this moment. Um, one thing I haven't uh, achieved with this Python program, I've just checked this. When you get into orbit, the camera view uh, angle changes, and I actually want to set the camera angle, uh, the camera mode to free. And I know it's there, but I didn't get, didn't get to get it working yet. So that's something I want to check out uh, uh, yet. And then, of course, after this, uh, this heroic orbital flight, I might want to try a, a, a much more fuel conserving mode of getting in orbit and there we are by the way we're in orbit look at the periapsis it's at 72,000 kilometers so it says welcome in orbit we done it Bob Ball Bob and Helene are in space so uh, what I want to say was uh, I, uh, there's more I want to do with this because it's it's great but I think with a little bit more math because I haven't used any math at this point, except degrees of pitch and heading, I would like to make it uh, make, make the spacecraft, the, the, the flight a little bit more intelligent and not just a series of steps that the spacecraft is going through. But uh, I, yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with, with this achievement up to now. This is pretty cool. Um, I guess I'll, uh, I guess I have to to publish the uh, the Python script on uh, GitHub or something, I um, think that's the right thing to do. 
uh, the spacecraft I can put that there as well I never published a craft file before but it's not an interesting spacecraft actually no, not exactly not exactly groundbreaking type of rocket rocketry here but okay it's uh, it helps if you want to try things I think so that's it I've done it it's where we're in orbit and uh, we'll see what I can do next time I'll let you know thanks for viewing and until next time